Speaking of Myrtle Beach, Chris's first night back was in Myrtle Beach, and um, I told I told him that, uh, you know, I said, just come on over to Morristown. You, we'll ride the bus uh, over to Myrtle Beach together. You know, it's about a seven-and-a-half-hour drive from here. And so the fellow who was promoting that event over there was a friend of mine named Tony Green, and he has since gone home to be with the Lord, um, young fellow, 41 years old, and um, he'd had kidney disease for a lot of years, just a great friend. Well, he called me the day before that concert. He was so excited that Chris was coming back, and he said, Jarl, he said, we're going to have 5,000 people here tomorrow night. He said, you guys are going to sing, and Governor Mike Huckabee's going to speak. Well, we had met Governor Huckabee before but at a pastor's conference, but we knew he wouldn't remember us, but I knew who he was. So we were kind of excited about it because we see him on TV. So we loaded up on the bus early the next morning, and we headed out to Myrtle Beach. I was driving. We got to Columbia, South Carolina, which is about halfway. Chris was sitting over in the buddy seat across the aisle from me. We weren't talking. I was listening to the radio. And so Chris looked across the aisle at me, and he said, uh, Gerald, you think maybe we ought to practice some of these songs we're going to sing tonight? And I said, I know my part. So we went, that's true. We went on to Myrtle Beach, no rehearsal. We got there, went in. They had a sound company do the sound because it it's a big room. And so we did our sound check, and we were headed back to the bus. And a fellow stopped me outside in the lobby there and wanted to tell me a story. Well, you all know I love stories. So... I just stood there and listened to him. Well, they went on to the bus. Well, his story was about six minutes long. And so when he finished telling, him, telling me the story, I laughed because it was funny. And then I just walked out the back door, and I found myself standing on the loading dock behind the convention center by myself. And this big black Chevy Suburban pulled in with tinted windows, and it came up right where I was standing and stopped. And the passenger door opened, and out stepped Governor Mike Huckabee. And when he got out of the Suburban, he pointed his finger at me like this, and he said, Haven't I seen you somewhere before? I said, Yes, Governor, you have, and we've drawn you another big crowd to speak to tonight. <laughs> what it led. Well, he thought that was funny, but Tony was driving the Suburban. He had picked him up at the airport, and he was real nervous, you know, getting to meet him and all that, so he didn't think it was funny at all. So he got in between us so we couldn't talk. Now, I'd known Tony for 30 years, and so he looked at me, and he didn't say what he would normally say. How's your kids? How's Donna doing? How was your trip? How, what's it like to have Chris back on the bus? He looked at me, and he said these two words exactly this way. Hallelujah, Squire. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> he said, Hallelujah, Squire. I said, no, this is Myrtle Beach. <laughs> he, he said, Hallelujah, Squire. Well, I thought the pressure of putting that event on had kind of caused him to snap. So I just did what Baptists do. I just walked off and left him standing there talking to himself. <laughs> I went and got on the bus, changed clothes. Well, when I came back into the auditorium, they'd already started the program. And they had us some seats reserved on the front row, and so I just slipped in real quietly, and the, the Wiznets were on stage singing, and I wanted to listen, so I just slipped in, sat down on the front row, and while they sang, well, Tony followed me in, and he sat down next to me, and while the other group was up singing, he said, Hallelujah, Squire. I said, Tony, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. He said, You got to sing the song, Hallelujah, Squire. I said, we don't sing Hallelujah Square. We've never sung Hallelujah Square. There's 5,000 people in it. Chris's first night back. We are not singing Hallelujah Square. And he said, I've got your check in my coat pocket. <laughs> All of a sudden, I felt led to sing Hallelujah Square. This is a true story. If you don't believe this, you look it up on YouTube when you get home. Some lady videoed this with her phone and put it on YouTube. Thousands of people have seen this. We walked up on the platform. We did three songs. I introduced Chris, and then I was sitting at the piano, and I looked across. I said, Chris, would you happen to know the song, Hallelujah Square? And he turned as white as a bed sheet. <laughs> and he looked back at me. He said, yeah, I know that song. I know that song. I've heard that song. I said, great. I said, we're going to sing it tonight. So we stood there in front of 5,000 people, no rehearsal.
and we sang Hallelujah Square for the very first time. And we've been singing it almost every night since. As a matter of fact, there's some people here tonight that were at Myrtle Beach and saw us do that, and they want us to do it tonight. So I want you to listen. Stan, I hope you know this. This is in the key of G. Are you in G? Great. Listen to Chris Allman. He's going to sing Hallelujah Square. I saw a blind man tapping along, losing his way as he passed through the throng. Tears filled my eyes. I said, friend, you can't see, but with a smile on his face, he replied unto me. Just like you Now I saw An old man He was gasping For breath Soon He'd be gone As his eyes Closed in death He looked at me And said don't look so 